We're in John chapter 10 <clears throat> this morning. This is the passage where Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. I've spent this week training, uh, training others on the police department. I help teach driving and it's always a fun challenge for me to train other people. I try to find ways to connect somehow. I, I consider myself a fairly cultured person. I've done a lot in life. I've, I'm like the insurance company. I know a thing or two because I've, I've seen a thing or two. Somehow I can connect with people. I've sang in front of a group before. I've, I've danced in front of a group before. I've worked at Disney World. I've uh, all the law enforcement related stuff. And I think, you know, I've pretty well rounded. I've tried some things. You know, I learned I wasn't going to be a professional dancer. I learned I wasn't going to be a professional singer. I used to be a window cleaner on Hollywood Beach, Florida, and used to hang out of windows 25 stories up. And then I learned I wasn't going to be a window cleaner. That was not what I was aspiring to do for a living. But all of these things, I try to connect with people to try to teach them something. I had a guy who joined the police department who played in the NFL. Really big guy. Really tall. Really big. Solid muscle. And so as we drove around, a lot of the analogies that I would use would be football analogies to try to communicate things to him. I w didn't play the same position he played in football, but I was familiar with some of the driving, or excuse me, some of the coaching terms with his position. So I would relate driving to playing football in his position. I've had people join the department that were realtors. They would sell homes. You're like, okay, how do you relate this to driving? But just like a realtor would have to do certain things that were in accordance to the law to get their goal and to, to interact with people and to build rapport. You're almost building rapport with your car. You're learning how to have that relationship work smoothly. The car has an ability and we want to raise your ability so you and the car match. And, but all these things that, that we use as instructors, if you've ever taught anybody anything, you always look for a way in, right? Somehow to explain this through visual aid or to give an analogy or it's kind of like what you've done in life and you relate it. Well, there's a few people that we can name in the Old Testament that were shepherds. Abraham, Moses, Isaac, Jacob, David. These were all people that were shepherds. So with that comes this analogy that is very familiar. What does it mean to take Jesus and put him in that position of the shepherd? Is he a shepherd? Does he have sheep here on earth? Not really, but he relates it over. Just like I did with the football player, we have this analogy. So we're going to read John chapter 10. And it's this context of the Good Shepherd where I believe Jesus is using this very familiar analogy, very familiar position to relate who he is. I am the Good Shepherd. What you're familiar with, I'm like the shepherd but better. I'm the Good Shepherd. And we have this right after Jesus heals the blind man and tells the people that they're blind. And yet he still reaches out with this story of well, I'll tell them that I'm the good shepherd and still try to relate who I am. So let's read the 21 verses of our context here of John chapter 10. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him, the doorkeeper opens and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him. 
for they know his voice. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of a stranger, of strangers. Jesus used this illustration, but they did not understand the things which he spoke to them. Then Jesus said to them again, Most assuredly I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved, and I will go in and out and find, and he will go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. But the hireling, he who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. The hireling flees because he is a hireling and does not care about the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know my sheep, and am known by my own. As the Father knows me, even so I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring. And they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock and one shepherd. Therefore my Father loves me, because I lay down my life, that I may take it again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This command I have received from my Father. Therefore, there was a division again among the Jews because of these sayings. And many of them said, He has a demon and is mad. Why do you listen to him? Others said, These are not the words of one who has a demon. Can a demon open the eyes of the blind? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much that you used your creativity and you used clarity of thought and speech to teach people, to teach us. Lord, we see here that this is an illustration where you're talking about who you are. You're like a shepherd and you use all of these roles to help us understand who you are and who we are and how the relationship is to go. Father, what a sad story that people don't know that you are the good shepherd. Your desire is to give peace and comfort and, and to give sustenance to the sheep which we are. You've come to be that good shepherd, one that cares for the sheep, one that doesn't run away when the wolves come. You are that kind of a shepherd. Lord, thank you so much for loving us. May we see you in this passage as the good shepherd one who keeps us and protects us and provides for us. We pray these things in your name. Amen. Jesus, I am the good shepherd. So let's talk about a shepherd for a little bit. Go to Luke, Luke chapter 2 and verse 8. Just a simple little point, point here where it says, Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Shepherding, super common. This is like me giving you an analogy on baseball. You may not have played baseball, but you know what it is. Jesus picks an analogy that's very common. Go back to Psalm chapter 23. Psalm chapter 23, beginning in verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. You know, think of verse 1 when he says, I shall not want. I have need of nothing because I have the shepherd. He is here. He is mine. The Lord is my shepherd. What does that mean? It means that he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. 
Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I shall not want for anything. He gives me all this. He is my everything. My everything. I don't want anything. Why? Because I have him. In Isaiah 53, we have this very popular passage, starting in verse 4 of chapter 53. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteem him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shears is silent. So he opened not his mouth. So we have this in Isaiah 53, the Lord being like a sheep. As our shepherd, he knows what it's like to be a sheep. He was led to slaughter. He was brought before danger. All of these things he endured. So as a shepherd, how weird is that? That we have a shepherd who knows what it's like to be a sheep. He endured all those things. So back in John chapter 10, a shepherd enters the fold where the sheep are kept. He calls to them. He leads them out to pasture daily. He protects them from wolves and wilderness, and he keeps them until he returns them into the fold at night. Here is the normal day-to-day -day shepherding. This is the picture. This is the illustration that God is using. And surely as we read those, you can see how God is with us through those, the working of a shepherd. Our chapter overview, things to keep in mind. Sheep is plural. He is the shepherd over the plural, the sheep, all of us. The sheep are the remnant or true Israel who are accepted, who accepted Christ. So as we read through this context, the sheep are Israel. The other sheep in verse 16 that are not of this fold are Gentiles. I'm sorry, but they're not Mormons. This is not talking about sheep of another fold being modern-day Mormons where we need to write another Bible. That's just not scriptural. That's not contextual. Jesus is defending his authority as the shepherd. I am the good shepherd. Here's what I do. Just like a shepherd does for sheep, we've all seen it. We've all been there. We've seen who a shepherd is. I'm just like that. But I'm the good shepherd. I don't have any faults. I don't mess up. Surely there are some bad shepherds out there. Jesus once again causes division about who he is. That's how, the, that's how our context ends. And then they were divided again is what it says. Why were they divided? Because some thought he had a demon. Others said, there's no way he can have a demon. Look at what he's doing. Look at what he's saying. There's the division and the point of the chapter. Who is he? I wrote these things that you may believe Jesus is the Christ and you may believe in him. So there's the main points of the overview. The shepherd is Jesus. Verse 11, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. The doorkeeper, back in verse 3, says to him the doorkeeper opens and the sheep hear his voice. The doorkeeper is a security guard for the sheep. This isn't referring to somebody specific. This isn't old Elijah. Or, there's nothing specific here other than him saying, to him the doorkeeper opens and the sheep hear his voice. In verse 1, Most assuredly I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door but climbs up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. Thieves and robbers come to prey on the sheep. These are people with bad motives. Verse 5, the stranger is a false leader, yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. This is the normal action of sheep, and he's telling us, know me so that I can protect you from 
false strangers that come in and try to deceive. If you know me and my voice, you'll clearly recognize the counterfeit. This isn't in our context, but verse 27, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. So the sheep are the Lord's people. And then the hireling in this story, in this context, is the hired help who flees in the sight of danger. You ever hear the phrase that unless it belongs to you, you really don't care for things? If it belongs to you, you tend to care for it more. The hired help with the sheep isn't going to stay there when the wolves come. Why? These aren't my sheep. I'm going to protect myself over the sheep. I'm not as invested in them. Jesus, I am the good shepherd. So, here we have the shepherd, Christ. Verse 2, But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. So, the shepherd enters through the door. The shepherd, in verse 3, receives the cooperation of the doorkeeper. You have a doorkeeper that is there to keep out danger. So this person is brought up in this story, the doorkeeper. The doorkeeper lets the shepherd in because he knows that sheep are protected and are in good hands. So the good shepherd gets cooperation from the one designated to protect and keep out the bad. The doorkeeper is cooperating with the good shepherd because he knows who he is. The shepherd receives the obedience of the sheep. They hear his voice and he calls his own sheep by name, and leads them out. Verse 4, he goes before them. It says, and he brings out his own sheep. And he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. A shepherd would go out in front of the sheep to make sure it's, they, the coast is clear, things are all right. So our shepherd does the same. He goes before us. He makes the path safe. The shepherd is followed by them, again in verse 4. The shepherd is the door for the sheep, verse 7. Then Jesus said to them again, Most assuredly I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. There is a way to come in and out, and I am that door. If you are the sheep and you want to come out to the pasture where things are good, you want to be safe and under the protection of the shepherd, you want all of this in life, I'm the doorway. I am the way that you go through to get all of that in life. I am the door. Verse 8. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. So the shepherd is the only true shepherd. Verse 9. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. Again, he's describing who he is by the, by the role of the shepherd. I am the door. Just like a shepherd, you know that role. You understand what I'm saying. He's giving this analogy. I'm the door. I'm the, I am the way that you come in and out with safety in your life. Verse 10, the thief does not come except to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that they may have life and they may have it more abundantly. He brings life for the sheep. This verse has been so bludgeoned to death by some that teach wealth and fame comes with Christianity. First of all, I am going to walk on streets of gold someday. I don't need gold here. Ephesians 1 tells me that when I come to know who Christ is and grow in understanding of who he is and what I have in him, I grow to understand the riches that I have in him. We are filthy rich. So when this verse says that Christ came to give us life, and more abundantly, he did not mean a Mercedes. He did not mean gold and prosperity and all these kinds of things. You miss who Jesus is when you do that. Your faith is shallow. You are ignorant. You're a moron, if I'm not being clear enough. If you think this verse is that I have Christ, but he's going to give me things outside of him. Uh-uh. Life abundantly is life in Christ. If you don't know that, it's because your faith is young. It's because your knowledge is young. He is the abundant life. You remember in John when he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life? I am life. If you want to have life abundantly, it's in me. I don't send you out to go get rich in the world. 
kind of sense does that make when I'm talking to you about I'm the good shepherd? The good shepherd doesn't put gold chains around his sheep. He doesn't buy expensive sweaters and outfit his sheep. He doesn't give them positions of prominence over the other sheep. What? They are rich in him. What do they have? They have peace, safety, a place to sleep at night. All of these things they have. Why? Because of the shepherd. He doesn't give them apart from him. He gives him him. He gives all of them of himself. So don't bludgeon this verse anymore. Don't bludgeon it into wealth and fame for the Christian. Your faith is shallow. You have skipped the part in Ephesians that told you that you are filthy rich already. Don't seek the things of the world. You have greater things. Verse 14 he knows the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know my sheep, and am known by my own. And then lastly, verse 18, it says, No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. Talking about his own life. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This command I have received from my Father. He possesses power over his own life. Four keys in this chapter. Four important thoughts. What are we talking about? What's the point? Key number one. Jesus is the history of Scripture. In all the fulfillment of prophecy and properly entered his commission, both legally and spiritually, I am the good shepherd. Jesus leads into new pastures of peace, safety, perspective, value, and all forms of refreshment to the soul. He is all of that. He is the provider of that. That is the abundant life. Why is that? Because if you don't have Christ, you don't have any of that. You're dead. You're a walking dead person. You are not connected to the source of life, which is God. If you're not connected to the source of life, you're walking in death. He gives it life and abundantly. Jesus looks at the voluntary laying down of his own life as an offering for the sheep so they can have an, ab an abundance of life. And then key number four, Jesus has folds of sheep that are brought together by him, not an outward organization, but this is an inner body of people, the saved, the redeemed. Throughout all ages, I have other sheep too, Israel and Gentiles. Don't miss these key factors. Jesus is... He is. I am the good shepherd. He's trying to make this point. The sheep, what do they do? They recognize the voice of the shepherd when we're talking about us. Do you recognize the voice of the shepherd? When he speaks, is it familiar? When the spirit within you is nudging you to do something, do you hear that voice? Do you know the shepherd? Do you recognize his voice? Do you recognize the difference between I'm going to go do something and the Lord is telling me to do something? One voice might be yours. The other one might be the shepherd. Do you know the difference? Do you know how to tell the difference? Do you follow the sheep? Because the sheep follow the shepherd. Are we following the shepherd? Do we refuse to follow strangers? What idols do you have in your life? What do you prop up as something to go off of pasture to explore because it seems exciting. Do you follow strangers? Anything that takes you from the shepherd. Do you find safety and sustenance in the shepherd? You could be in the middle of war and be perfectly safe in the shepherd. How can that be? How can that be? Because he's that good. In the midst of everything, he is our safety. We're always safe and secure in Him. We have everything we need, and it's in Him. There's stories of people going to war and praying in a foxhole as missiles are hitting the ground. What are they praying for? That their faith would remind them, I'm in Christ. Even in death right now, He's got me. I'm safe. This physical death is not something that I need to fear. He's got me forever. I'm forever His. They are of differing folds, like I said earlier. So, 
Let's summarize some things here. Have you heard the voice of the shepherd? He calls out. Have you entered the fold? He is the only way. He is the door. He's trying to tell them, I am the good shepherd. I'm calling out. My sheep will hear my voice. Do you trust the shepherd? Have you come to enjoy fellowship with the shepherd? That's a big one. Do you hang out? Do you go out and pasture with the Lord? Just hang out? I mean, really, is it hard to do? Is it awkward? Maybe you don't know him well enough yet. Because there are times when he's all you got. Enjoying fellowship. Abide in me, he says. Abide literally means to pitch a tent. Stay a while. Be at home. Are you at home with the shepherd? When you open your Bible, are you... Man, this feels like a warm blanket here. I'm hanging out with my Savior. Or is it awkward? He may still be like a stranger to you. Have you learned how the shepherd leads and protects? And then verse 9, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved. And he will go in and out and find pasture. The life and experience of the believer. When you're in Christ, he leads you in and out. You go out to pasture, you live your life, you have everything you need. He is the doorway that we choose to live our lives and we stay in. He is the one when I'm going to go do something. He's the door that I go through to go do it. He's always there with me. He leads me. He is the doorway that leads out to what I'm doing, what I'm experiencing. It's always through him. All my decisions go through him because when I do that, I'm safer that way. The Good Shepherd. Do you know him? Do you hear him? Do you follow him? We are always tempted by false shepherds, thieves and robbers, as the context says. They come to steal, kill, and destroy. Destroy what? Your relationship. Destroy your pasture. Christ wants you to hang out with him. Get a perspective of your life. Again, you could be going through the most terrible things in life, and he's the good shepherd, and he is mine. I have him. He's with me all the time. No matter what's going on, I've always got him. Let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that you are our Good Shepherd. It takes spiritual maturity to come to grow in knowledge of who you are and to be able to accept these truths as truth. Lord, we look at our circumstances. We look at the world around us. We look for signs. We look for, we look for things to satisfy us. We look for some kind of evidence that we can believe in. And it's so sad because we don't take you at your word. We don't believe that you lead us. You call to us. You want to hang out with us daily. You want to lead us to food daily. Lord, you give us everything. You give us peace and safety all of this is in you and it gives us the ability to endure anything because we know the shepherd is here. The shepherd is here to keep us in his hand. Lord, thank you for, for loving us so much and as we go from one context to another in John, we, we had the, the clear example of a blind man seeing and people being made blind by that action, by that miracle. Lord, we now come into a shepherd, the simple life of a shepherd where you made the same point of who you are. You are our everything. You are our good shepherd. Thank you so much for your love for us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.